it's Betsy and Mom with Happily Ever After, etc. And we are back with another garden tour. But today we are at Mom's house in her backyard garden, which we don't show as often as we do her front yard or, of course, my garden. Right. Because uh, for a very long time, the front garden was brand new and we were working on we're it. Working. This garden she started first. Um, and it was already more established by the time we started doing gardening on YouTube. So it is actually looking really pretty right now because for the most part, this garden back here gets, it does get sun, but it gets more shade than the front yard, which means right now in August, when it's hot, 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 the plants back here look just a little prettier than the ones out front. Yes. Plus it, a lot, a lot more stuff is more established. Yes, especially like these vincas, they are all self-seeded. They come back the last like three years. Uh, the Black-Eyed Susans have been here for, since their second season? Oh no. Third oh, season? About four. Fourth season? This is the fourth year for this start. This big hydrangea, this is a lace cap hydrangea. You can see it's not in bloom right now, but it's been here for oh, gosh. many years. The longest. Yes, five, it was. Five years. It's the first thing. One it was one of the first things she planted. I planted that. And the crepe myrtles. myrtles. The crepe Which myrtles were this tall. You can see how tall they've gotten. Yes. Uh, her climbing rose is blooming on its third or fourth second flush of the season. Yeah. Second season. Um, but it is. Uh, it's it just it's at least green. Oh, okay. And it's uh, a little sparse because I cut it back. Hard. She cut it back hard, and so now it's just the top that is yeah, going. Shooting for the stars. The first flush was much prettier all the way around, but that's okay. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to start and take you just around and show you all the parts of the garden that are really pretty right now. Um, and then I still have to do an August garden tour at my house. I haven't yet because it's been so hot. Yeah. At, there are only four or five things in my garden that really look pretty this time of year. And you already saw them in July. Don't worry, we will do one, but not today. And I still have some stuff that have like yeah. pooped out already. This time of year, it's kind of the transition period where some yeah. of our stuff is just done for the yeah. summer. Like my phone's already. Yeah. yeah. And you just got to um, be done with them. Or the things like annual, some of my petunias this time of year are just done. And I replace them when it gets a little cooler next month with mums or pansies or cooler weather flowers which if i did that right now in august a i wouldn't be able to find them nice. b they wouldn't last through the heat of august so august is one of those months where only the most heat tolerant already survive. survive it's the hunger games yeah. let's go okay so Right to the right of the arbor, here's a closer look. The black-eyed Susans are really pretty. Yeah, and they've been here a while, but for some reason I got a coneflower in there this year and I gotta get rid of it, <laughs> dig it out or something. Cone flowers are one of those things that really will self-seed themselves. Yes. And you have a little butterfly bush back here that's I doing well that this, past this year. year. Mm -hmm. And then you've got some, is this Nandina in here? That's, um, yeah, Nandina. And then, I can't remember what that one bush is. Some kind of bush. Yeah. It, does it, it have a flower or is it just a bush? It flowers in the spring, so it's already done. Hmm. And then... And then uh, you can see right behind that, she has a whole grove of cone flowers that are done for the season. <laughs> and some lilies. And then all of her woodland violets, you'll see better from that side. And all my... Um, and she has a bunch of foxgloves. Foxglove, which are finished blooming. But you can see I have some foxgloves for next year. They're, they're coming up this year. They're biannual. Which means they will They will bloom, bloom for next us year. next year. Mm -hmm. And for some reason in our gardens, we don't have too many foxgloves that successfully seed and come back time and time again. But this part of mom's garden uh, does the best at that. It does. It does. it does better than the front and it does better than anywhere in my garden. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we do with the milk jugs make it more and more foxgloves every year because mm -hmm. they're mom's favorite flower and they're 
probably top five for me. Yeah. So we want them every single season. And if they won't plant themselves, we will plant them. Oh, yeah. They are worth the uh, time investment because you can get a pack of seeds from Johnny Seeds for $5 and grow 20, 30 of them. Yeah. As opposed to they're usually $10 minimum. And I'll still go buy a couple, but she'll not usually as many buy as I used to about buy. 10. But that's if we can find them at the nursery where they're like the $3 pots and they're pretty little. And then she'll usually buy maybe five or 10 of the bigger $10 ones. If you, not that many. Anymore. If you really look, you can find the $30 ones, but we don't buy those. Nope. <laughs> nope. Mm -hmm. So from here, she does have a petunia. That's a bubblegum petunia. Yeah, in a pot yeah. and then a whole row of mums yeah. that will I cut uh, them back on the 4th of July which is the rule in the south cut back on the 4th of July and hopefully they will bloom in they will the bloom fall. in the fall for they us bloomed in the early summer we have a long enough season that mums for us will typically flower twice which yeah. is really nice mine flowered once and they're getting ready to flower again they're all full of buds and then she's got one yellow petunia here that is he's on the struggle bus yeah, but he's, doing but he's okay he last week. i know he had like one string of flowers last week yeah he, so he came back for some reason this week a lot of my stuff is starting to come back this week i think the temperatures are slightly we lower a lot of rain. and we had a lot of rain because yes. we've had a lot of heat advisories too yes, it's not exactly cool it's just a lot of rain have more petunias these or are not petunias. Are they are vinca. Vincas. And that's where my agapanthus is. It didn't yeah. bloom this year. It hasn't bloomed for like three years and neither well, has it mine. Bloomed, and then I cut it in half and gave some to Betsy. Yes, so. but that was literally like three years ago. Yeah, it just decided. It hasn't, it hasn't bloomed since. The hostas are blooming though. Yeah, they're kind of blooming all over. The Which, whole if you like hosta blooms, they smell really good. They do smell good. And these are the sensation hostas. So they grow in the sun or in the shade yeah and your black eyed susans look I put pretty more, i put black eyed susans kind of here and there all over she the likes place. them and they're a good um repeating plant yeah i really like them. oh here's you can see uh those are daily the the and violets yeah. and the mm -hmm. box gloves, gloves. Mm -hmm. so they are they're all over and then you said these were lilies these are day lilies, yeah yeah she likes They've day lilies bloomed. Got another hydrangea here, more vinca. Is and this then, one of those? This is one of those new bushes I just put in this year. So this is one. This is one of my new bushes. Betsy got it for me this year. I did get it for her. And it's, the, it's called Double Play Candy Corn Spirea. Spirea. It's one of the proven winners bushes and they're really pretty. We actually saw them on another tour on YouTube and mom fell in love with it. Yeah. She literally wrote down the name like three different times on three different videos. And then I found one at a store on clearance. So I bought it for her. And it has um, really pretty foliage. It has a pink flower, more in the spring. In the spring it flowers. But then it has really pretty foliage. And here's the tag. And so you can see the foliage kind of goes from a dark green to a light yellowish to chartreuse. Sar Sar mm -hmm. And then it kind of is tipped with that pink, dusty pink. So it yes. kind of does look like a candy corn. It goes yeah. ombre effect, which is fun. You have. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. I found one and then you ordered. I ordered some, but they came and they were this big. But wait till you see how big they've gotten. Yes. So they've gotten very big. We will see. Is one's surprised. over there, right? Yeah. So and we'll I get there. Salvi in here, but. They just got really leggy. Yeah. So I just didn't worry about them very much. Um, this is my limelight hydrangea. It has bloomed. They're on the way out, but I do have a few few blooms here coming in. But it's it it gets so it gets heavy. very heavy with the rain, especially. So it does unless you stake it up really well. It tends to mm -hmm. flop. flop. And I just got a. Uh, a standard limelight hydrangea, so I'm excited to try it. Mm -hmm. And I have more cone flowers over here, kind of like over there, the pink, the purple ones, and then some in the middle here. Yeah, so the cone flowers, you can see where I kind of moved them and staked them. And those, all her stakes, so you know, they are very pretty when they're in bloom. But they flopped because of all that rain we had. Yeah. And then, 
course, this is my um, Louisiana iris yellow. It's a yellow flower, and I got it at my grandmother's house in Louisiana. So yes, so it's one of her favorites. Mom likes me. yellow. Yes, and it blooms in the spring, but it's a really fun texture the rest of the year, at least, yeah, which like is different. Um, and then over here. These are the unplugged pink salvia. She has five of them around this curve. Mine did so well last year and they came back. Moms are doing okay, but not as good as mine. Yeah, so they, they don't like me right now. Yeah. But it's funny, like our houses are only 10 minutes apart and our flowers do completely mm -hmm. different sometimes. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Yep. So. Hopefully they'll do okay now that the cooler weather has come back and, then hopefully um, they'll come back and hopefully year. they'll come back next year and be established because they did okay last year, but they've done really, really, really well this year so since be... they started earlier and they were yeah. better established and they're yeah. a, what is it? A tender perennial, yeah. which means in our zone, cause we're in eight B, mm -hmm. um, as long as we have a mild winter and we don't have too many freezing nights, these kind of things will keep coming back for us. But if we have a winter with a lot of cold, they won't. Okay, so right here, this is a pink azalea that I moved years and years ago when I first planted the garden. I put in the hydrangea, the azalea, and the um, crepe, myrtle. crepe myrtles. So they were under my carport and I was it wasn't a carport then, but when I put the carport in, I had to dig them up. They must have been like this tall. They Mom has huge established azaleas all around her house. Her house is 100 years old, and I don't know how old the azaleas are, but they've got to be... They were pretty old. Pretty old. Most so of them were over my head. So. It, uh, it's come back beautifully, and it blooms beautiful pink blooms in the spring. In the spring, yeah. So, mm -hmm. and she's got a verbena in a pot here. Yes. And her favorite bush. This is one of my favorite bushes. It's called Pittosporum. And it is just, it has no flower, but it's got great foliage on it. And it stays low. And it is. It gets like two feet tall by three feet wide. So and she's got them planted got all around her little arbor here. Mm -hmm. And she's been looking for more ever since, but she's never been able to find more of this a couple. particular variety in a price point she wanted to pay. I found a couple, but not too many. So. <laughs> All right. I think we're going to keep going around the outside of the garden and then we'll come back through the middle. You can see so this one is really good. It's, yes. It has all that. It has more shade. It. So all the more chartreuse green, yep. can I say that word today, is the new growth. Yeah. And it has definitely spread out more but it's here. Variegated, and I really Mom I likes like variegated. all variegated foliage. So then she's got more woodland violets here around this crepe myrtle and iris and a couple vinca and a rose, a whole bunch of mums and it's another hydrangea. Yep. And I transplanted a lot of these vincas because they were all over there. And they come back and from I seed. And I moved them. So I just moved them all around. Yeah. So, and then more Nandinas and my Louisiana iris has gotten so big. Yes, these are the same ones from um, Nana's house, mom's mom's grandma, my great grandma, and they are. I'm gonna get some eventually for my house, yeah, but they are really, they are really, really loving it here. They do. They, they really do. Like this spot. And I've dug them up. I have some in the front yard. I have some in the back. I've I've planted them. She's in two given spots. some to and, and, my uncles. And no lie, I brought them from Colorado in a gallon bucket. Yeah, two gallons. And they came from. Uh, Louisiana. Louisiana to Colorado. So yeah. they've been moved a couple times. And this is a volunteer. Crate Myrtle. Crate Myrtle. Which I've decided to leave because it's on the edge. And I figured it couldn't hurt to have another little tree. I'm, go I'm going to have to, yeah, trim it I've more. It, but I have to trim it again. Yeah. But it Most of the crate myrtles in the backyard are like these two. They are like multi-trunk crate myrtles. Yeah. Um, so we'll... We'll trim out all but the strongest of trunks I had probably next done season. Earlier this summer. You've got to do it a couple times. And I, I got to do it again. But they have this really pretty light pink lilac color almost, which is different from the color right next to us. I don't know where the color came from. Yeah, the one up here is more of a darker pink. Like hot pink. Yeah. The other side of the crepe myrtle is 
I'm, another one of my azaleas that I planted. <laughs> I was going to say the sparse side I think of the I garden. Have four azaleas in the garden that I transplanted from in the four my house. corners, almost. Yeah, basically. Probably where because they put will them. get so big. I mean, yeah. they were big when I transplanted. And you can trim them and train them, and they'll and just I, keep coming back. I actually cut them back to about two and a half feet tall. Just, I mean, where they were nothing but sticks. And my yard man, who is basically a yard man. I mean, he's a lawnmower. That's all he, all he does. He is the sweetest pie, but he, he doesn't. If you know do not tell him specifically, don't cut this plant down, he, he will, will cut, cut it, down. it down. He knows not to cut stuff down in my garden. Which is one reason why we do have borders around both of our gardens, because yes. then he knows. Hey, that's a plant in, yes. in the border. Don't touch it. But he dug them up for me. And oh my gosh, this guy is so strong. And he was like, oh, he was sweating. It was it was hard work. Well, and you have to think, he is not a young yard man. Oh no, he's like a couple of years older than me. Yeah. He's, and as I you can tell, mom is in the prime of her life. He's 68, I believe. Yeah. And I'm only, I'm 65. She's only 65 years young, y'all. Yes. All that's right, okay. back to the garden. So, on the other side of the little crepe myrtle, as you can see, when we did my paver patio, um, mom got way more pavers. They are all just stacked over here for now because she's going to be putting in, eventually, a greenhouse, a greenhouse back here. And we're going to be using the pavers for the flooring. So, she's got a couple extra pavers here. Some vinca, a little um, dwarf Alberta spruce, mm -hmm, which... which Got last Christmas. We did get it last Christmas. At, 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 uh, at good old Wally World. Wally World, yeah. Yeah. Walmart. It matches mine. They are actually great in the landscape, but mine is in a pot. I move it in and out of but a they, seasonal area. They grow so slowly. You can see on this one. You see right here? Tiny, tiny. That is the growth for the year. Half an inch, maybe. Yeah. And that's They're what they so say is they grow slow. Like maybe an inch or two a season. It looks like yeah. you need to prune some of this out. Yeah. It was a little hunky because mom uh, didn't go as soon as I told her to. And she got one of like the last couple. Yep. And but that's okay. Then she's got some more lilies and iris. And is that an elephant ears? Yeah. It's, I don't know where they come Elephant from. ears and a weed? Who knows? No, that's that. Um... Oh, those are those pen cushions we grew from seed that are... They have never... Have never done anything. Done anything. Of everything we grew from seed this year, they've grown. They were they've grown, disappointing. But though. they didn't do anything. They're very disappointing. Then a Texas sage that has not bloomed but it is consistently. Growing. But it's grown a lot. And About it's... two feet. It's full. Mine is very sparse of leaves. This thing has grown. No. And I think... I don't know if it's... I don't know if I need to fertilize mine or what. Yeah. Then these are these came from my the Nana flowers. They have a pink flower in the spring. It looks kind of pitiful right there. It looks but. very pitiful. Like, I don't know what's going on with it. I don't really know what kind of plant it is. We just know it has pink flowers. It's got a real pretty little pink flower in the spring. Yeah. And then you can see Vinca popping up where the wind has blown it everywhere. Yeah, I just left all that. Yeah, why not? Free flowers. And then more sun patients. Are those sun patients or different? Sun patients. And they are almost done flowering, mm -hmm. just and like that poor little Vinca looks. Yeah. He he didn't make it. And then this rose is he putting out a runner? Is this a no? It's just it's just it's, wide. No, I think it is a runner. It looks but like he's it. kind of pitiful. I mean, he's yeah. trying to die, but he's, he's thinking he's about got it. new foliage on him. Look at this. I don't know. And this is green. So well, who knows? I don't. Maybe know. Maybe his son will fare better. Maybe I don't know. A little and salvia. One of my that's doing well. And another singular pitosporum. And some dianthus that's holding on. Mom just uh, has been fertil or fertilizing, mulching everything. So a yeah, little right. extra mulch. Everything looks a little beat up. Yeah. This is the main grove of Vinca. This is where I get all the babies. So she just comes over and, like, you couldn't see holes. She'll just dig a, a, shovel. a shovel, I'll just move it. put a big shovel in there and dig it. And then these are some of your newer plants. So this is oh, Prince, yeah. Tut Prince Tut from Proven Winners. Mom got them to try this year, and they she has like it, three right plants. One, two, three. Do you like them? I do like them. They give a different interest that's 
a little taller. And a different texture. Yes. If it doesn't have a bloom, then a texture is really nice. So this is a different texture from the thin, strappy foliage of the iris to, you know, the short broad of the vinca. I have some knockout roses, which I need to prune. Yes. They've all bloomed and I need to prune. I, bloom, I probably cut them back about three times a summer and then they bloom for me each time. Mm -hmm. and, and even this is a huge stand of uh daisies that gets this tall it gets really very tall. tall it gets very tall so i kind of want to move it but i i was waiting for it to finish blooming um i'll probably move it in the fall yeah and then a new japanese maple that miss betsy gave me yes that was a present she had been wanting it for weeks and weeks and months and months and she i mean she's wanted plenty of japanese maples for years but when she saw this one she loved it and i put it seems to be doing okay. Yeah. If, if it does okay, I'll put it in the ground. But we figured we'd start it in the pot. That way, if it didn't love this spot, we could move the pot yep. without disturbing the roots. So. And I have another uh, one of my azaleas. azaleas here. And she likes these headboards. She has the headboard and the footboard over there as kind of architectural pieces, but supports. For fun. I mean, azaleas don't really need supports. No, but it's kind of fun. And then we've got the other side of the garden. So we've got vincas, black-eyed Susans, another, and another volunteer, crepe, volunteer myrtle. crepe myrtle. Are you going to leave that one? I, I probably will not. It's, I probably wouldn't with the Japanese maple it's right too there. too close to there. And the other crepe myrtle. That wasn't even English. And then this petunia is looking really good. It did well. I put two of the um, emitters. Drip no, emitters? no, two plants in there. Ah, well, that's why. And it's what is it called? That's bubble okay. gum pink. Yeah, that's that bubble gum pink. And, and then we come in the garden. Here's and the I think two yellow here too. that's doing the best. Is, and put, sometimes it's just a plant that's doing better, or sometimes it's location. Yep, it's hard to say. Now there's another volunteer. And crepe then myrtle. Have, crepe myrtle. I have a lot of daylilies in here that I got from my grandma. Tall, pretty house. daylilies. Oh, they're gorgeous. Yes. And another Sounds like the water's one. starting. And here is the ruby hyacinth bean that I grew from seed. Mine Never looks bloomed. pitiful. It hasn't bloomed once and it's barely Mine's grown. Crazy. And yours literally and is blooming everywhere. Blooms are just, they just popped like in the last day or two. Because yeah. I've been out here and they weren't out here. So oh, I, I like, like it. Show them that other candy corn. Yeah, here? we haven't got there yet. Then we've got a bit of diamond frost euphorbia here and the rest of the black eyed, black -eyed Susans, some lilies and the violets. Um, and you can see that the Ruby's hyacinth bean on this side, we planted them on four corners, is not doing nearly as well, but it is growing. This is what mine look like. And they're... It's behind the tree. Yeah, but oh, mine is not. In, mine is in the sun. That's why. And yours in, as well. in the sun it's looks like crazy. this. Yeah. It gives me some nice dappled shade. Yeah, which was kind of the point. And yeah. she keeps just coming out and training the runners. Well, a friend of mine gave me this gazebo. She was going to just, I don't know. Trash it. Trash it. I don't think she, she said the, the, um, the fabric cover on it just died. Yeah. So she, I think she was going to sell it, but I said, hey, how much do you want for that? She goes, oh, you could just have it. I'm like, score? <laughs> and we'll probably put a shade cloth on it eventually, but not this minute. Yeah. All right, so where's the last candy cane spray read? It's, yeah, it's over right here, right? Here. So this one she ordered. And when it came, it was only this big. It Teeny was tiny. In a four inch pot. Yeah, and now and look how big it's gotten. It has gotten way bigger than four inches. Yeah. So. And then I put another one of the her boxwoods, and we just planted hollies. the whole Japanese hollies. They're not boxwoods. I keep calling them boxwoods all along the fence. I I decided to plant a couple in the garden because in case any of those died, I could replace them with ones that I that I had. Yes. She got all of these at like super amazing clearance price. Oh, 50% off. So we got. Instead of 20, 
four dollars i paid 12. so we got all they had and then i have another pit of sperm back here and it'll fill in the spot real nicely and i don't remember what this is i need to look it up but it dies back every year and then it comes back in this time of year and to fall it'll get about three four feet tall and has real pretty little orange flower on it so it's perfect for fall yeah so that is everything in the backyard garden. As we keep working on it, like I said, we've started around the fence and <coughs> right over here where the bench is, mom's adding more things over here by the fence. But for the most part, the backyard garden is here until we get the greenhouse put in yeah. and start landscaping <coughs> the rest of the yard, which is probably going to be Oh. a little while because yeah. uh we don't know how to build a greenhouse but we're gonna learn yeah and and we're, really, we're convinced we can do it <coughs> mom has been out here too long she's this allergic year, i i've really only moved things around and added a few things a few bushes but i've maintained when i hurt my hip we lost a lot of gardening yes. ability because we did mom does a lot of things really well but she typically <coughs> doesn't do the muscle portion yes which is fair but i did all this mulch and yeah. i composted i got well first i got all the leaves in it's then i composted and then i mulched but see before that i had um landscape fabric in and i decided i didn't like that so i took it all up and then i mulched everything it, it was, really helps it get the weeds while. down because she had a bunch of horrible weeds. Gri grip weed, grip weed. Whatever the bad ones are with oh, all the seeds on the bottom. Horrible. So she pulled them and then put new mulch down to try and smother them. Yes. And it's going to be a process. She's going to have to pull new ones. I and... had to pull them twice. Yeah. So we're going to go inside though because yes. the mosquitoes have found us and I mm. don't want to be eaten. They don't bother me, but they love her. Mm -hmm. So bye y'all. Bye.